everyone, Caroline Roberts here. Welcome back to our network and to Premium Content Wednesdays. Y'all asked for it, so I am bringing it. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the basics of screenwriting. So if you are interested, guys, in writing films, TV, um, anything like that, then this course or whatever, this webinar, um, is for you. Now, it is going to be really basic, and if you guys want me to go in-depth into anything, you know, that I talk about today, I can do follow-up videos covering, you know, other topics more focused. Um, but yeah, I want to talk about um, screenwriting and give you guys some different resources, software that you can use. But first off, I want to talk about with the main thing that you want to... Well, actually, I just feel led to pray. I don't know why, but I feel led to pray, which is good. So let's just open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for each and every woman that you have placed on this network, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that they're able to learn from all these resources, Lord. I pray that if anyone is feeling discouraged, if anyone is feeling overwhelmed, feeling like they're not good enough, I pray that their hope and their confidence would be in you. I pray that they can do all things through you who gives them strength, God. I pray that they would be faithful and committed enough to follow through with their book, their screenplay, their project, whatever it is that you have given them to write, Lord God. I pray that you would strengthen them, Lord God, and that you would be with us during this time of learning and bettering ourselves as writers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys. So one of the first things I want to start with with screenwriting is understanding what a logline is and having your logline. So a logline is kind of going to be like the one sentence or the two sentences that you would use to pitch your script to someone. Have you ever like been on Netflix or whatever provider that you use to like search for movies, Lifetime, whatever it is, and you're like looking through the TV guide and there's like that one or that those two sentences that explains what the movie is going to be about and you decide to choose whether or not based off of those you know sentences if you want to watch that movie or not that's kind of like a log line but I want to give you guys um, an exact definition that I received online so basically it says it's a brief one to two sentence usually one sentence but it could be two sentences sometimes summary of a tv program film or book that states the central conflict of the story often providing a synopsis of the plot and a book to and a hook to stimulate interest okay i'm gonna read that one more time a log line is a brief one sentence sometimes two sentence summary of a TV program, film, um, or book that states the central conflict of the story, often providing a synopsis of the plot and a hook to stimulate interest. Okay, guys, so I I wanted to give you guys examples of really good log lines that have been used and kind of give you an example of how these just just within one sentence or two sentences, you basically get the gist of what is the main conflict in the story, what is happening and what, you know, that movie is about. So for the Godfather movie, it basically the log line was the aging patriarch of an organized crime dynasty transfers control of his clandestine empire to his reluctant son. Okay, and one of the ways that they were able to achieve um, such a great log logline is that they use descriptive words and ag adjectives so that you can have a better idea of what it's talking about. Because it could have said that he transfers the control of his empire to his son, right? But the fact that it's not just his empire, but it's his clandestine empire, the fact that it's not just his son, but it's his reluctant son, 
that tells you a different story. The fact that it says it's his reluctant son, we know a little more about the conflict that is happening in the story rather than just, oh, he's giving his empire to his son. No, his son is reluctant. Um, so basically including descript descriptions and adjectives, details like that in your log line will help to tell the story. It doesn't just say, you know, the dad of a dynasty. No, he is aging, aging patriarch. So the aging makes us feel like there's tension there. Like his life, you know, it's about to be up. You know, there's conflict there. Um, it's, it's not just a dynasty. It's not just a family business. It's organized crime. So that's like a hook. That's like interesting. Like crime is something that's very interesting that people want to know more about. So that so imagine all of these elements, all of these details put together. They chose specific words that make you um, interested, that build tension, that reveal the conflict. And all of these working together make an awesome logline. The aging patriarch of an organized crime dynasty transfers control of his clandestine empire to his reluctant son okay and then another example is the matrix um so the log line for the matrix says a computer hacker learns from mysterious rebels about the true nature of his reality and his role in the war against its controllers okay so some some things that I recognize that stood out to me about this log line is that it didn't just say a computer hacker learns from rebels because rebels, I mean, we're used to rebels, right? But he used the word mysterious. So the fact that he uses the word, they use the word mysterious brings like that mystery to it. It makes us want to know why are these rebels mysterious, you know? what's different about these rebels so it, it makes it sound really interesting makes it sound like a mystery and then it says he learns about the true nature so not just the nature right because it could have said a computer hacker learns from rebels about the nature right no he learns from mysterious rebels right so there's that ambiguity there and then about the true nature so what is the truth as humans, we all have a desire and a passion like to know like what is the truth. I believe that a lot of people are searching for truth in this world. So the fact that it says he didn't just learn about the nature, but the true nature makes you feel like this movie is going to reveal um, some deep, deep things about the world, about nature. Like This is going to be a deep movie. And if you have watched The Matrix, it is pretty deep. And I feel like The Matrix has a lot of um, social commentary to say about society and just government and things like that. Um, so I'm going to read it again. A computer hacker learns from mysterious rebels about the true nature of his reality and his role in the war against its controllers okay and then it's like war so you're like conflict you're like who are the controllers what are they trying to achieve what are they trying to do or take over you have that conflict there so you have mystery you have conflict and you have truth okay those elements work, working together make an amazing log line. So those are the things that stood out about the two log lines that I chose. So when it comes to screenwriting and you're thinking of your idea, try to see if you can put together that idea in an awesome log line. Because a lot of the times, you know, your log line is going to reflect your script and show like how marketable your script would be especially if you're looking to sell your script or anything like that they are going to want to know what your log line is okay if you ever meet with a producer or anything like that sometimes they don't have time to read your script so you have to have your log line memorized on bat and say you know this is what my script is about okay i want to talk about um 
I also want to talk about beats. So beats are basically the moments in your script that move the story forward, okay? So something impactful in your script that matters, meaning that if you took out that part, your, your story wouldn't be the same. Your, your story would be different if you took out those parts. There are certain things from your script or from your story that you can take out and it wouldn't make a big difference. It's just like a minor detail or a minor change. But a beat is a significant part in your story that keeps the story going. Um, so basically, I want to give the exact definition. It says a beat in a screenplay is a moment that propels the story forward and compels the viewer to take stock of what could happen next. Each scene is comprised of many beats. So in a screenplay, your screenplay is made of different scenes and those scenes comprise of different acts. Acts 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4. But within the scenes, that is made up of beats. And I want to give you guys examples of different beats that you can have in your screenplay. So... An example of a beat is an event, for example. If there is a big milestone that happened in that person's life, they had a baby, they had a birthday, they had a loss of a loved one. Those are like events. Like if you even think of your life, think of your own life, your own life story. What are some beats in your life? Like specific times that you can pinpoint that impacted your life. Um, realizations. So basically, like realizations are things that make the characters, they have to make a decision, kind of like revelations. Their mind has changed. Their mind is thinking differently because of something that happened. So that changes the course of their, the story because it changes the character's perspective. So what are some major realizations, revelations, or things that are happening in your screenplay that are also considered beats? Another one is um, resolution. So what is kind of like if you think of when you think of resolution, kind of like New Year's resolution. So what are some goals? What are some experiments? What are some desires that um, the character has to make a change? Those are beats. Those are causing a change in trajectory of your story. And then the last thing is interactions. Kind of like if you think of your own life, like your your interaction your first interaction with god your first interaction with the person you fell in love with like meeting certain people or even the character um interacting with the villain or whatever it is what are some major interactions or or meeting opportunities that are happening between your characters that are comprised that that make up a beat of your story and a lot of times in order to um start a screenplay this is not necessary but um if you want like help with starting and you don't feel like going straight to writing a full screenplay a lot of writers start with their log lines and they start by creating a beat sheet okay so a beat sheet kind of like when you think of writing a manuscript and you have an outline a beat sheet is like the outline of screen writing so basically you would separate your acts and then you would write the beats within each act. A screenplay is made up of these main elements, I would say. It's made up of action lines. So what is the action? What is happening? What movement is taking place? It's made up of the dialogue. So what are people saying? What are the conversations that are happening? It's made up of scene headings. So where are these things taking place? What time are these things taking place? Where are the scenes located? And it's also made up of the characters. So introduction, introducing the characters, um, letting us know more about them. Those four elements, like if you have those, those are the bulk, like the, the bones of your screenplay. Action lines, dialogue, scene headings, and you know character introductions or introducing your characters. Okay, guys. And... I also want to go back to, if you do want to learn how to do a beat sheet and have an example, there is a book called Save the Cat, okay? Save the Cat is a book all about writing beats, beat sheets. Um, I don't have that book personally, but my, I know my friend had it, and she studied it, and she loved it. The book that I do have is the Screenwriter's Bible, and I love it. 
but it, it really shows you like how to write your screenplay like it has a full screenplay example in here it tells you about how to implement all the transitions flashbacks um what is another thing everything everything that could be a part of a screenplay like sound effects um, all of those things, it tells you how to implement that in here. So I will put the link below of where you can purchase those things from, guys. Um, let me see what else did I want to say. So I, I actually recently, I'm working on a script right now. Um, and I'm not completed with it, but I did, I did finish writing it. But when I say I'm not completed with it is I need to still go back and edit and make some changes and stuff. But I want to share the screen, um, play software that I'm currently using. One of the best ones is Final Draft Pro. Um, but that's a little pricey. So I, at this time I'm using Celtics, which I think is just as good or it's really good, but it's cheaper. And I think that they also have a free version that you can try as well. But I just want to show you guys an example of basically what I was saying with everything that is that comprises of a screenplay. Okay, so let's go into my Celtics. Um, so this is the screenplay that I'm currently working on, right? So, oh, and I also wanted to say just about screenwriting. Screenwriting is different than writing like a narrative story, right? Um, with screenwriting, it's all about what you see because it's going to be on screen. It's going to be visual. So you have to be very descriptive in how you want things to look. And you also have to, and you have to be like literal, like literally how you want it to look, not metaphorically because the movie is not metaphorical. The movie is going to be real. And also you want to speak in active voice, not passive voice. You want to speak in active voice. And I'm going to show you an example of what I mean. Um, but let's go to Celtics. And okay, fade in. So that's what I'm talking about. Like this is what I want to happen when the movie is starting or when the show is starting. Fade in. And then this is the scene heading. If you see... Um, this is the scene heading right here and it says external EXT stands for external. So with your scene headings in screenwriting, you're either going to start with internal, meaning that the scene is taking place somewhere indoors in a library, in a house, you know, in the gym, or it's taking place external in the backyard um where else at the beach at the park those are external so it's either going to be ext dot or int dot and you want to get screenwriting software because it already has these like formulas integrated into it so it'll help lead you in writing it okay so i have external i said it's taking place on the college university lawn and then dash day so you have to put is it daytime or is it um, nighttime? So it's either day or night. It's not afternoon. It's not midday. It's not dawn. It's either day or night, okay? Um, because when you write, when you show the movie, it's not going to matter like the specific time of day. It's either going to be bright outside or it's going to be dark outside. Um, so just stick to internal and external, day or night, and then the description of the place. Okay, so let me go back to it. So whenever I introduce a new scene, I try to lay the foundation of how is that scene going to look like so that the producers of that film or of that show can find a scene that looks similar to what I'm saying. And whenever I introduce a new character, your characters are supposed to be in all caps when they're being introduced for the same for the first time. And then you take time to describe how the character looks as well. Okay, so let's read my description of the scene. A cream Ivy League building, let me see make this bigger a cream ivy league building with victorian style architecture stands at the backdrop of a large green plot of land students walk across the lawn some stand and exchange laughs they are either carrying books oversized purses or backpacks large southern moss trees litter the background okay so that is my description of um you know where this is happening and i can actually space this out 
because this is more like an action line with the students walking across the lawn, exchanging laughs, some are carrying books, da da da. So I can even um, space that. Right here, I have internal science lab during the day, and I'm introducing my first character. So I'm introducing Robert. Robert, early 20s, tall and thin black male, is hovering over some test tubes and wears a long white lab coat. Okay, so as you can see, I already implemented um, I implemented the scene headings and then we did the character intro. So I want to give you guys examples. I'm going to go to some action lines that I have and I'm also going to go to some dialogue that I have to give you guys some examples of that as well. Um, here's some dialogue that I have right here between Betty and Robert. And I guess let me just introduce Betty so you know who she is. Betty, early 20s, 5'3", white female with medium length wavy brown hair, peeks in from the open door and knocks on the door casing. Betty, well, I should have known you'd be here. Robert, sorry darling, just give me one second, finishing up on this last experiment. Okay, so that is how dialogue um, is formatted. It's kind of indented in the middle. And I'm going to show you guys how you can use um, this software to make sure that everything is properly, properly formatted. Okay, and then I have some action lines right here. So let's read over my action lines. And as you can see, when I highlighted this right here, it switched to action. Okay, right here is the character. You see, I went, I highlighted the character, and it knows that it's the character, and it knows that this is dialogue, so it changed to dialogue right here. Okay? So Robert grabs an Erlenmeyer flask and pours a bubbling red solution into a test tube that he is, that he is holding over the table. Betty is leaned against the open door casing. She lifts her right arm to view the time on her watch. She raises her brow and sighs. Okay, so that is um, that is action. That is Betty doing action, and that was example of some dialogue. So basically, the bulk of your script is basically introducing the scenes. Where are we? When are we there? Is it internal, external? Is it day or is it night? And then you want to introduce, okay, who are the characters in that scene? Introducing Robert. This is the age range he's kind of in. It doesn't have to be an exact age because you're going to just get an actor that looks in that age range. So it doesn't have to be like he's 23. Okay. And this is the age range that he's in. This is what he kind of looks like. Um, it's the type of person that, that, that he is or what he looks like. And then um, you have some action. What is some action taking place? Think of everyday actions, you know, scratching your head, things that will, you know, help reveal what type of person this is. And then also dialogue. Make sure that your dialogue is very, like, believable or based on the time frame or the story that you're trying to tell. So my story, I'm going for a more southern ass accent and southern dialogue um, because my story, I want it to take place in, like, kind of old time, you know, Southern Mississippi and stuff. And also when you introduce your scene locations, you should also include like if it is taking place in a certain generation or time, you should include that. So that's one feedback that my professor gave to me is to include like the years. Like so if it's taking place in the 20s, the 1930s, then to include that as well. Um, Let me see what else did I want to say. So yeah, that's basically it, but I want to show you guys an example of how how the software automatically helps you to format this in the right way because your screenplay needs to be formatted properly. So let me go to the end of my screenplay. This is like about 11 pages. And then I'm starting a new line right here. So if I wanted to add a scene, he scene heading, you see where it says scene heading? So for example, I would put external, um, let's see, um, park dash during the daytime and then space. And then it says, okay, do you want to do an action now? Do you want to introduce a new character? So basically you would choose, you know, what do you want to use? What do you want to do? 
So I might say I want to do dialogue and I want um, or I want to introduce a new character and I want it to be Betty and I want Betty to speak. So now it's going to dialogue and I want her to say, hey, how are you? Okay, so basically all you do is choose the different options that you want to choose and then, you know, write it out so that it can be in the proper format. Okay, guys, so that's basically it for the example of how to format your screenplay, how to write it out. I'm going to find a beat sheet um, example or a template and I am going to link it down below. I'm also going to put the beat sheet in our resources tab. Um, so if you go to the resources tab, that's also the same place where we have the writing schedule. There will be a post in there with the beat sheet that you can download so that you can work on organizing your screenplay, outlining it, and then when you're ready to write the actual screenplay, you can do that as well. But I hope that you guys found this video helpful about screenwriting and I'll see you next Wednesday in the next video. If you guys have any other suggestions on what you want to see for premium content Wednesdays, definitely let me know in the comment section and I love you guys. Until next time, bye.